Welcome to Ultimate DIY, where you learn to be your own handyman. And today, I'm going to show you how to keep your toilet going at little cost and with no tools. So you may be asking yourself, how can I work on my toilet with no tools? Well, I can tell you right now, you need very little tools for most of the things when it comes to keeping a toilet running. About the only tool I generally will use is a 5 8 wrench, and that's only if I'm changing out a water line. All of the, the other things I'm going to show you, you can install without any tools at all. So let me explain to you quickly how a toilet works. You're going to have two major components. You're going to have your fill valve or you're going to have a flush valve. And the flush valve will either look like this canister or it'll be like the old traditional rubber flap. Those both do the same thing. But that's your two main units. So if your toilet is running constantly or it has low pressure or there's any other real problem, it's generally going to be between these two components. Now, that's not to say that you can't have a problem in a handle being out of adjustment, somebody's installed it wrong or something like that. But most of your problems are in these two areas. If you can figure out where it's coming from in these two areas, you're golden. So how it's going to work is you will have your water line here. Say this is coming from the wall. This is actually attached to your shutoff. This water line is going to be screwed onto the bottom of your fill valve. And this fill valve goes through a hole in the bottom of the toilet, has a rubber seal that keeps water from leaking. As it fills up, this float will rise. And when it rise, rises, there's a plunger inside of here that will shut off. And it will stop the water from going anymore until you flush again with either this flapper or the canister. It will raise up, and when it raises up, it allows the water to go to the bottom of the tank. Your float drops, and then it starts all over again raising. It's very simple. You'll understand that a little more if you're not familiar with toilets. When we get to the back of the toilet, I'm going to show you live how to do that. Be sure you watch to the very end because I'm going to show you a part that literally costs $3.50, and it will fix 9 out of 10 problems with your unit before you end up replacing valves and things like that. So I'm going to go through some of the basic parts though that, so that you kind of understand what the parts do and what you might need to, to do to replace them or to get the, the toilet to work right if there's a problem. So if your toilet is running and you hear that little water running sound all the time, there's a couple of areas to look. The very first thing I will do is I will not shut the water off. I will reach over and I will pull the lid off of the toilet and set it aside where it won't get broke. And I look. Generally, the first thing, especially if it's a canister type system like this one, I will look at the water level. And if my water level is up past this ledge, you're going to look around these canisters and they tell you there is a fill level. If it is above that and it's running over, that's a very simple fix. I can fix it in about 10 seconds and walk away. It's going to be at my fill valve. You have an adjustment here. And this adjustment, you will do counterclockwise, and it will move this float down. If I go clockwise, like this, I start moving the float up. And what that does is that's going to change this shutoff point here by where the float ends up. So if I'm having problems, and I've got too much water going over the top of that canister, all I've got to do is go counterclockwise and move this float down. When I go the counterclockwise and it moves down, now it's going to shut that valve off quicker. So when it goes to rise, it's already hitting my shutoff point up here early, and it will move that water line down, and it will no longer be flowing over the top of the canister, making that noise constantly running. If that fixes my problem, I put the lid on and I'm done. I go home or what have you. I'm, I go eat dinner. I'm finished. If that is not my problem, though, and I don't see water going over the top, the next area that I'm going to look at is going to be, if it's a traditional system with a flapper, 
I look at the flapper. These flappers, they're, they're very pliable when you first get them, but over time with water and all on them, they get very hard damaged. You'll have this black water stuff that builds up on them and they no longer hold that seal anymore. So they let little bits of water drip by and make it into the bottom of the tank or the bottom of your toilet. So it's constantly running a little. So all you do with this is they have two little clip areas. You just reach in, undo your chain, reach in and pull these off the little clip bar, set it aside and put the new one in. This particular one has some dials and I'll show you those dials in the inside there, but you can rotate this. So it will change these little holes that let water in and air and it will allow, it'll make this close quicker or it'll make it close slower so that you have more time to actually drain a tank. So that's really on that the hardest part to do because it's very fast. This unit, by the way, only costs $6.58. And I can literally change that out in under 60 seconds and be on my way doing something else. So when it comes to the canister, you take the back of that off and the thing that's scary is people look at this canister, they're not used to that, they're used to this. So it's very intimidating for somebody who's never messed with it. The easy thing about a canister is you have a hose going into the center. You unplug the hose and you take it and you twist it and you just pull it off and now it's open. Super simple. To put it back, it goes right back the same way. Put it in and turn. On the canister, the thing that is actually the, that causes your problems, so if you have that same water running sound, it's this gasket right here. So this gasket, the yellow one, it just pulls off. This is what makes your seal that keeps the water from running into the bowl on your toilet. Okay, and so the gasket, like I said, all you do is peel it off and it goes right back on the same way. And you will take it and it once you get it off, it goes in very simple, slide it in and turn it clockwise. Now these gaskets, here's a couple of examples, all the different canisters that are out there, they take different gaskets. You find the one that works on your unit and these will give you a description on the back of which ones they work on. But just to give you an idea, this one, which is a very thick one, it goes to a big, big canister. This one is $7.48. This one, you get two of them, goes to a smaller one, and this one is $7.47. The yellow one runs about the same. So that is a very simple way to fix the water running situation. Now, if you've gone through all of that and it does not fix your problem, it is probably going to be in the valve. Now, the valve itself is pretty simple. There's a couple of moving parts. It's mainly the float. But in this top part, you actually have a mechanism that rises up and down. And sometimes it'll get so bad you have to replace the whole unit. But nine times out of ten, you can take this top off and there's a little gasket, this one right here, and you can replace that gasket for $3.49. $3.48, excuse me. And you can put that gasket in. And what you'll do is you'll open it up. Now, you'll open it up, you'll flush everything out real good, put the gasket on and put it back. Now, that's what I'm going to show you how to do in here. But there's a trick. One of the things guys have a problem with who don't do this all the time is if they open up the back of the toilet and the water is up, you can reach in and you can turn this and it opens. Now these open just like opening a medicine bottle. You're going to go counterclockwise and you push down. It's kind of like a safety bottle. So if I try to open it now, I can't get this to open. It's struggling. It won't open. But you'll find when I do it inside of here with the water holding this plunger up or holding the float up, excuse me, which is the plunger in here, you can turn it. So what you got to do is if you don't have any water in the tank or you're doing this outside of the tank for whatever reason, make sure you're holding the float up, push down, turn, and this top comes off. Now I'm going to show you in detail how to replace the gasket and how to clean it. But I wanted you to understand that because a lot of guys have problems there. And then it just goes back the same way. So you'll do that, clean that out. If that doesn't fix your problem, then the next step is to replace the whole unit. And like I said, that's super simple. Reach underneath, shut your water off, undo the hose, 
undo the little screw. Uh, you'll have a nut on the underside of your tank. Undo that, pull it off. This whole piece pulls out, slide the new one in. Now I'll give you a bit of advice that'll help you. When you are, before you put your new one in, especially if they're the same make and model, lay the old one next to the new one and set your plunger to the same depth. If you do that, you'll save yourself a lot of work trying to get it back to that level later. So those will help. But I'll, let me go ahead and tell you a little bit about the, these, though, so that you kind of understand the difference. A lot of these are adjustable. They have a little sleeve here. You can move it, lock it into place, and you can slide these up or down if you have a taller tank or a shorter tank. They're made to be able to use very easily. This unit is your entry model unit. This unit costs $8.08. .08. And if you're wondering what I'm reading, by the way, guys, I put stickers on the side to make sure that I can tell you guys the correct prices. But this will work on pretty much any unit. This is what most guys buy. They have one for a few dollars more that is going to have a brass uh, fitting here at the bottom so that your threads are all brass so that it does not, uh, well, so that it can't bind up as easily and you cross thread. Whether it's really worth that or not, I don't know, because I'll be honest with you, if you get it in there and you're careful starting, once you get that on, you're not going to be taking it off again. So I don't know if it's worth a few bucks just to have that brass down there. So that is your basic unit. You're going to have another unit like this one. And I do like this unit because you're going to see when I take this off, this I believe is a red or a yellow top, meaning the top that's here are different colors. And for the different units, well, this one is made to work with all of these different units and even the old plunger style units. So the cool thing, though, that I like about this one, which is different than a lot of the others, is this little valve here. This valve controls the water that actually goes into the bowl. So you can turn that up or down. So if you might be able to turn it up to give you a little bit more water in the actual bowl, which is great, or you can actually turn it down to match your original toilet. So if you have a low flow toilet, you may wanna move it down just a little bit. So that's what's really nice about the valve, which makes it really great. And this one should do the same way. So if you hold the, the float up, you should be able to turn it the same way and take it open. And then you can take the little, piece out and then you can replace it with a new one and it goes back on the same way and like I showed you a while ago when you were putting these on make sure they are taking them off make sure that that little plunger is all the way up if you're doing it with water in a tank you're not going to have to worry about that so that is the basics of the actual stuff that you're going to install now I have something else that's kind of a little treat here because in my original video talking about this Kohler valve, this was a, a defective part. And when I say defective part, the hose comes in and would attach to a little nipple here at the top of this yellow disc. And every time you would pull this up with your handle, see how high that goes up? It would actually hit that rubber line and it breaks that nipple off over time. And in my original video, you could only buy this whole unit at 20 to $30 for the whole unit. Well, since then, they have come out with a replacement part for this, and I found it on Amazon just this morning, and I'll leave the link up there for you guys. But you can replace just this disc with the bar that goes on the inside for $8.50. And remember, super simple. Take it, push down, turn, and the whole unit comes off. If you need to replace the gasket, you pull the gasket off. That's a, the big part of where you hear that water running. If you're going to be replacing this, go ahead and replace the gasket at the same time. So now that you kind of have an understanding, actually, there is one more thing that I'd like to talk about here real fast. It's the lines. A lot of guys do not want to spend the money and replace these lines. And I'm telling you, it's very cheap insurance. This line here is 12 inches long. It's a steel braided line reinforced. And this, this one actually only cost $4.50. This one was $5. So for $5, you make sure that you don't flood your house. And let me explain how these work. All of these lines are going to have the same fitting at the top that goes in the toilet. And they're made from, they're actually a 7 8 size. They're all the same. So if you're trying to figure out which one you need, you know that already. Get your unit off and you can measure this length. This is a 12 inch one. Make sure what your length is before you go up there. 
The other problem where everybody has are these fittings down here. Now, I will tell you that nine out of 10 of these fittings on your toilet are gonna to be 3 8 That's the norm. But that does not mean that somebody has not come and changed that valve out somewhere along the line and put a different size valve in. But one of the ways you're gonna know is get yourself a wrench, a 5 8 inch wrench, and put it on that, that uh, nut. And if it fits perfectly, then you know you have a 3 8 If it is a half inch, it is going to take a 3 quarter wrench. And you'll know but your 5 8 is not going to fit so you know that it's not a 3 8 that somebody has modified that shutoff valve and if you're going to replace the shutoff valve guys get the quarter turn shutoff valves don't get the old crank style turns if you have a leak and you're down there trying to crank that thing shut and it's taking you forever your whole room is flooded on top of that, they have a little disc in there. When that disc wears out, it may not shut off all the way. And now you've got water going everywhere. And you have to shut water off to the whole house now to try to get this fixed. So do yourself a favor. Change those valves out with quarter turn valves. Make sure that you change the hoses. Now, if you're not working on the bottom end and you're doing some of these top end fixes that I've been talking about today, then you may not need to worry about the hose. But if you're doing anything like changing out your fill valve, Go ahead and change out the hose at the same time. It's $5. It's super cheap. So let's go ahead and I'm going to take the top off the back and we're going to go in and I'm going to show you how that works. Okay. All right, guys. So I'm going to go ahead and show you now the tank. So what's the first thing you're going to want to do, don't shut the water off, but go ahead and move the lid and set the lid back out of the way. Just set it somewhere where it's not going to get dropped or stepped on because that lid is very important to you. All right, so now that it is out of my way, the first thing I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be looking to see where my noise is coming from. So if my noise is running water, the very first thing I'm looking at, if, especially if I have a canister, is right here. So as this water fills up, if it's going over this top, and here I'll give you a, a little a demonstration. I'll hold the handle a little just so you can hear the noise. So if I'm hearing noise like that, now granted, I made the noise by doing this, but you'll hear it kind of run, then you'll hear this kick on, you'll hear it run, you'll hear it kick on. And if you look and you see water kind of flowing over the top of this and it's real close to the end, that's where you need to adjust this. That's where you're going to take it and you're going to turn it counterclockwise so that it will actually move this float down a little when it's fully extending this arm. So it will stop here now instead of way up here. So you'll move it down and get that water line below the edge. If that stops your problem, you're done. Put your lid back on, you're finished, okay? Now, if that doesn't stop the problem, and I have a flapper, the first thing I'm gonna do is pull the flapper loose and look at it and see how old it is. See if it's black on the ends of it and see if there's a problem with it. If I've got a new flapper with me, I'm gonna put it on. It's like literally six, 650, put it on and see if it stops. If it stops, I'm done, I'm, I'm gone. Now, if I have a canister like this one, you can see down at the bottom, you can see the rubber seal that goes around, which does the same thing as the flapper. I'll pull this loose. I'll push down on this. I'll pull my hose off, push down, turn, pull this up. I can probably even, I may be able to still leave that chain connected if I can turn it sideways and get the new one on and then put the other one back. Now, of course, before you do that, you're gonna turn your water off. So you can stop the water flow. And if you're trying to get water out of this tank and you're doing anything like changing this valve, you can even use a wet vac in here to get all the water out at the bottom. Because if you notice, if you look down at the bottom of this valve, the bottom of this uh, canister, you've got about that much space that it does not flush past. It means that much water will be in the bottom of this tank. And when I take this valve loose, it's all gonna run out on the floor. So a wet back will really help you here a lot. If not, have a bucket underneath on this side and when you loosen this valve, it'll catch it into the bucket, all right? So at this point, if I've replaced my flush gasket down here at the bottom of my flush, whole flush mechanism, if it's the old style, I've adjusted my water 
and I'm still having some problems. So I'm either got really slow water coming out of here or constant water is running out just a little at a time. You know, something along those lines, then, you know, that means that there's something wrong in here. So there's two things going to happen. I'm either going to have to replace this whole valve or I'm going to replace just the little gasket at the top. So remember, it's going to look like this right here. It's a 242 for this one, and this replaces most of these for a fluid master. Now, they're going to have specific ones for the Kohler, like this one here, or any of the others. They have the same type unit on the bottom. So, and you got to look, some of these will even replace other models. You have to read on here to see what they, they have a very small print, but to see which one it goes to. And if you don't know what your model number is, guys, they're usually stamped right here on the back. Whether it's a Kohler, um, Glacier Bay, whether it's a Toto, they all stamp their stuff inside. This one is a 4835 CSVA, and that'll tell you which parts you need here. And remember, you can replace this factory float the same way as uh, the fluid mesh, but this one is going to run you about 20 bucks. So that being said, I've tried all these things and it still worked. It's still doing the same thing. So next thing for me to do, I'm going to change that little gasket. So what I do is I reach down and I shut my water off right here. It's shut off. Now what I'm going to do, you don't have to do this if you're doing the gasket yourself necessarily. If you're just doing the gasket, but I will tell you, it makes it easier if you pop this adjustment loose because I like to take this piece and when I get it loose and I go rinse it out in the sink. And I also want you guys to be able to see what it looks like from upside down. So you'll pull this backwards and it just clips out. You're gonna be a little afraid you're gonna break it the first time, but it's very strong. Pop it backwards. Now remember, now my hands are really big. I wear a size 14 ring. It's hard to get my fingers back here. So I may have to block the view for a second, but I'm gonna push down counterclockwise, just like opening up a bottle of medication. Push down, yeah. see if I can get it to turn here. Make sure that's all well it is. So it's giving me a little bit of a fit right this second. So push down, turn, there it is, it's loose. Okay. Took a second to do it because I'm trying not to block the view for you guys, but it's loose now, so it should just pull up. There it comes, and it turns over. Now you have a little pin here, so when you pull the gasket off, don't yank it. I try to be up, pull it off nice and gentle, and I'll grab right here at this first ring, and it just pulls off. So you get it off of there, just like that. Be very careful with this. It's not going to fall out. Water will come out, but the ring stay or the little bar stays in there. So that controls this whole little plunger mechanism. So where you may have trash is here, and I'm going to show you in a second how to get that out. The gasket may not be bad. You may want to reuse it, but you know, for $3.50, if you got it open, just put a new gasket in. Take this to the sink and wash it out real good and get everything out of there. Get your new gasket, you'll come back, you'll gently line it up with that little bar, put it in, and you're going to feel it click into place. That's it. It's ready to go. So the other thing that I like to do, though, is I will take a cup like this old Starbucks cup, or I'll use a Dixie cup or something like that, and you want to not, not get yourself sprayed. So you're going to hold it over the top, and you're going to turn the water on, and you're going to leave it on for about 60 seconds. I'm only going to leave it on for a few seconds just to show you how it looks. But this is all you do. And the water is now flowing through it, and it's cleaning out that valve. Like I said, 60 seconds, and then shut it off. So... What that's doing is it's flushing anything out of that tube down there that could be in it. Because if you've got hard water or you've got little dirt granules or dust or uh, you know anything that gets in those lines, I've seen it where it's little, little bits of fine sand and that sand builds up in there. It gets all of that out. So now all, to put it back together, all I'm going to do is turn it back over, put it on. You're going to feel it kind of it falls right into place like that. Now, instead of going counter, you're going to go clockwise. You'll feel it pop. It's in place. Take this, the little lever, and you've got to attach it again. Now, you have a ring here. Make sure that the little hook or the little you know clipping part goes on top of the ring like 
just like that right there. And you got to kind of force it back in and it pops in place. Now it's ready. So now everything is on. So to make sure you've got this put back together right, you're going to take and turn your water back on and you flush. And you'll know if it starts, you'll hear water running. If you don't hear any water running in here, then you don't have this put back together right. Now, I will tell you, when you do it the first time, if you don't have this thing down good, you're going to pop it off and spray water. So make sure that you got your cup nearby and that you can reach down and shut it off if you have a problem. But it's pretty simple, guys. It's not hard. And that those things right there will get most toilets working again really quickly. The other problem you could have is in this handle. If people are cranking that handle down, they can break this area through here where it doesn't work right, or they can make this little slip nut not function correctly anymore. If you take this part, you're going to find that there's an exact way that these things go in and they tie together. If it's not a factory arm, it's going to have a whole bunch of little holes on it so that it can work for different units. And you may have to play with it and find the one that works for your unit. But what I have just shown you today will fix 99.9% .9 of the problems that you're going to have. And if you noticed, I have used zero tools. So at this point now, it's flushing. Everything's great. We're going to put the lid back on and we are done. Okay, guys, there you go. Everything I showed you, super simple. All the parts are really, really cheap, and you didn't need any tools. The only tool you might need is going to be the 5 8 inch wrench, and that's only if you're changing a water line. Be sure you look for my canister video so that you can see how you put the canister in, and I've got a couple videos I'm putting in fill valves as well. If you have any questions, be sure you send them to me. I try to answer those as quick as I see them. If you're not a subscriber, please consider subscribing. And hit that little bell notification so that you know every time I have a new release. I appreciate you guys watching. We'll see you on the next one.